Hey everyone, Crisis here. So, with Let There Be Carnage now in theaters, and having already helped answer the question of which cinematic venom would eat the brains of the other over at Key Issues, I've happened to contract my own brand of parasitic urge to delve into more Venom content. And when I asked myself where I should start on my deep dive, one of my favorite comic books of all time immediately came to mind, Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man. Said story featuring an interesting and unique take both on Eddie Brock and the symbiote. See, in the Ultimate Universe, or Earth-1610, fathers of Peter Parker and Eddie Brock, Richard Parker and Edward Brock Sr., were biological engineers contracted under Trask Industries. Having witnessed his own father lose his life to cancer, Richard Parker would devote his research to developing a cure, eventually creating a biological substance out of his own DNA. Designed to enhance the human body's natural healing process, granting immunity to any disease. Unfortunately though, this research would be left incomplete after its developers were seemingly killed in a plane crash. However, a sample of this black goo-like substance would be left with Edward Brock Jr., a tangible inheritance passed on to the surviving Parker and Brock heirs. After the reunion of said heirs, Peter would bond with what he would dub as the suit, basking in its ability enhancing effects before parting ways with the organism after its intensification of Peter's own rage and bloodlust. Believing the suit to be destroyed, Peter would reveal to Brock his secret identity of Spider-Man, with Parker instructing Eddie to look no further into the corrupting power of their father's failed project. Feeling betrayed by what he felt to be Peter's lies and the destruction of the last wishes of his own father, he would merge with a hidden second sample of this artificial symbiote, giving birth to Venom, a dark reflection of Spider-Man only driven by an insatiable hunger and a desire to once again merge with Peter Parker. Now with the backstory out of the way, let's get to the topic at hand. Just how powerful is Ultimate Venom? For the sake of this video, I will mostly be focusing on Eddie Brock's usage of the symbiote, but I will give some remarks as to the various other individuals who have claimed the suit throughout the years. Being a nemesis of Spider-Man, Venom would come to blows with the webhead on multiple occasions, being able to damage the wall crawler with his strikes, with it even being stated that Peter barely survived their first encounter in Ultimate Spider-Man number 38. Venom was even capable of launching Peter with a backhand after having his symbiote restored while facing Carnage, another being capable of harming Spider-Man. And to those who point out how when in close proximity to one another, Spider-Man would grow weaker as Venom in turn would grow stronger, Carnage doesn't seem to have this effect on Peter and Venom could trade blows with and tackle the symbiotic parasite. So with Venom solidly scaling to Spider-Man, just how durable is the wall crawler of Earth 1610? In the pages of Ultimate Spider-Man number 133, as well as Ultimatum Requiem number 2, we see Spider-Man survive a massive explosion stemming from Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum. While Peter didn't exactly tank the blast to the same degree as the Grey Goliath, he nonetheless survived it with minimal bodily harm. This explosion was calculated to yield 502 kilotons of TNT, or large town level in power scaling terms. Now you might point towards Spider-Man's death via sniper bullet as a counter to this feat. However, Ultimate Spider-Man is much more consistently portrayed as having durability higher than bullet level. Even the subject of this video has been shown taking hails of gunfire multiple times, with Spider-Man being able to shatter the symbiote's jaw. So it's likely Spider-Man's anti-feat is more so plot-based and can be ignored in terms of scaling. The book was called Death of Spider-Man after all. And if you thought Eddie Brock under the possession of the symbiote was a powerhouse, just wait. Because in the pages of Ultimate Spider-Man number 126, we see the suit finally reunited with Peter Parker, who would then go on to have a pitched battle with the foremost team of Earth-1610, the Ultimates. With the enthralled Spider-Man trading blows with Captain America, Iron Man, and even the God of Thunder himself showcasing feats of tanking a blow from Mjolnir, as well as grappling with the mighty Thor. 
before, again, being undone by the symbiote's weakness to electricity. Keep in mind as well in that comic that the Ultimates had no idea that it was Peter Parker inside the suit, with only Fury realizing this towards the very end of the fight. All the while, the team's leader, Captain America, is threatening to bash the poor kid's skull in. This is insanely impressive, seeing as Thor is able to do battle with the Incredible Hulk, a being shown tanking a one megaton nuclear bomb, as well as being stated to be able to cause a level 8.9 earthquake, yielding energy equivalent to 337 megatons of TNT, or mountain level. That's nearly seven times more powerful than the Tsar bomb. But again, this is Peter Parker acting as Venom, not Brock. And seeing as Peter is a superhuman even without the suit, making him a much more powerful host than Eddie Brock inherently, as well as the fact that the symbiote was desperate to bond to Peter with the suit sharing DNA with Parker, it should stand to reason that this version of Venom would be much more powerful than it would be while influencing the likes of Eddie Brock. We also see that under the influence of the Maker, or the Ultimate Reed Richards, the symbiote was able to cause harm to Eddie Brock of 616. However, the Maker himself remarks that he has made enhancements to the symbiote, meaning it should be far and above more potent than ever seen up until that point. In the death of Ultimate Spider-Man, we see Peter Parker react to and outpace sniper fire after the trigger was pulled, with Punisher's weapon of choice resembling a Barrett M82 sniper rifle. This feat would grant Spider-Man, and thus Venom, supersonic plus, or between 2.5 and 5 times the speed of sound reaction speeds. Spider-Man is as well able to combat Electro, a pretty obvious wielder of electricity-based attacks dodging Max Dillon's onslaught numerous times. There are various types of electricity, with the plasmatic energy moving between 50% and 100% of the speed of light. Keeping Spider-Man's feat of reacting to a sniper rifle in mind, I'll be conservative and place this scaling as falling into the massively hypersonic speed tier, putting the higher end of Venom's reaction speed between 100 and 1000 times the speed of sound. In terms of Venom's unique powers and abilities, he's been shown regenning on the fly, reconstituting his tongue and a mouth full of teeth after a blow from Peter. He was able to eventually reform his body after he was seemingly vaporized by electricity, which seems to be his main weakness in the Ultimate Universe. Eddie Brock even believes that he outright died in this incident, and he was still able to return. Venom can as well alter his mass, becoming a mound of liquid to the means of escaping via a sewer drain, it is also stated in the official handbook of the Ultimate Marvel Universe that Venom can produce webbing similar to Spider-Man. However, the symbiote seems to favor his incredible agility and his use of tendrils for locomotion as well as combat. Venom as well sports a type of life drain slash absorption ability, either through literally devouring or consuming his opponent via the suit itself. He is able to grow in size as well as power, especially after absorbing fellow symbiote, Carnage. Venom would likely boast a shared variant of life draining showcased by Carnage, seeing as they are both symbiotes sharing Peter Parker's DNA, with Venom likely proving resistant to life drain as Carnage failed to sap the energy from Eddie Brock during their back and forth. With the likes of Conrad Marcus at the helm of the symbiote, we see the suit brandishing the ability to manifest weaponry, not unlike the main universe's Cletus Cassidy. And that's a wrap. The Venom of the Ultimate Marvel Universe possesses large town levels of attack potency and durability, up to massively hypersonic reaction speed, and an array of devastating powers and abilities. With the symbiote, proving even deadlier when bonded to the likes of Conrad Marcus, Peter Parker, and Reed Richards. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to share any constructive thoughts or suggestions towards future videos in the comments below. If you're a fan of content like this, you can support it through liking and subscribing. It helps out a lot. Or you could pledge to my Patreon, link in the description below. Appreciate it, and I'll see you all next time.